What's going on everyone? So after the last video where we kind of just introduced ourselves to Foundry Virtual Tabletop, and I'll leave a link up in the logo and down in the description below, we had some questions just kind of how to generally use the software. And I feel like we need to have a good tutorial here kind of moving forward. And that's what this series will be about. Today though, however, we're actually gonna just go over just basic Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition character creation in the Foundry Virtual Tabletop space. We're just gonna use normal beta, nothing fancy, no extra modules or anything like that. So you guys get the vanilla experience when you first load up the software itself. Now, if you guys have any questions as we're going through this, make sure you leave a comment down in the comment section. Also comment on the live stream. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube and on Twitch. Link for the Twitch stream down in the description below. We talk about anything Dungeons and Dragons, campaign building, world building, virtual tabletops, whatever the case may be, anything related to tabletop role playing, we'll talk about it in there and hang out. Also, if, if you end up liking the video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for the channel so that you get notified when other things like this come out for the channel, whether it be tutorials about Foundry Virtual Tabletop or anything else related to tabletop role playing. Now, without further ado, let's actually just jump into the video. All right, guys, so now that we're over here at the computer, let's actually jump into Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So this will be the first thing you actually see when you load up after you've kind of made your own profile, you've actually put in your license key and stuff like that. Now, I've already created a game world and that's actually really easy to do. All you have to do is come down here, create your world, and you can kind of change all that kind of statistics out there. Uh, the one thing you do have to do before you kind of jump into is if you want to have the Dungeons and Dragons system, you have to come into game systems and you have to install it here. And the easiest way to do that is you click install system and then you have all these different versions in here. You can actually have Pathfinder 2E. There's a lot of other really cool ones in here, but we already have Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition already loaded in here. So we're going to leave that the way it is. Then we're going to come over here to game worlds and then we're actually just going to launch this world that I have already. It's just a test world for us to play with. You're going to come to this screen. Now you can actually invite your players and stuff like that, but I'm just going to log in as the game master and join the session. All right, so now that we're in here, I have this is what you're going to see when you first jump in here. You're actually going to have all these different kind of tools. If you have a scene already loaded up here, which I currently have just a blank one in here, um, but under normal circumstances, you'll just see a black screen. Uh, you'll have all these kind of different tools. You have some measurement tools and stuff like that, but we're not going to get into that. We have the hotkeys down here. Um, and then we have all these little tabs over here in the chat. You can actually hide the chat by clicking this button. Pretty simple. Uh, this is the encounter tracker, which we don't have an encounter going on right now. So that's not anything to worry about. We have our scenes directory where we can pick which scene we want to use and we can actually right click on it and we can actually make it active and then we can actually see it here on the screen. But we're just going to go back to this blank one for now. We're going to come over here. We have the actors, which is our player characters and our NPCs. So we'll get in that in a second. We have our items, which we can actually create custom items and create folders for them. We also have journal entries, same kind of thing. Then we also have tables we can also make. We can create our own tables and create a folder of different tables so we can actually kind of nest them in different areas. We can actually also bring in music and different playlists and stuff like that for ambiance or just music in general. And then we have our compendium here for our Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition stuff that's loaded in here. So we're basically right now going to mainly use this tab and our actors tab. But then also here at the end is our general configuration where you can kind of configure your players and invite people and stuff like that. But for right now, we're just going to talk about actors and our compendium. So the first thing we're going to do in order to create a new player character is actually we're going to jump into our actors here. And we're going to create a new actor. And you're going to see that you're going to have to give them a name. So let's just go with... Uh, let's go with... Um, Jeffrey the Barbarian. And guess what we're gonna make? We're gonna make Jeffrey the Barbarian. Um, and he has a character, but we could also change to make him an NPC, but we're just gonna leave him as character. We're gonna create this actor, and then this is what's gonna load up, is we're gonna have this default uh, character sheet come in here, and we're just gonna put in here that Jeffrey is gonna be a human. His background is just gonna be, let's say folk hero. We'll have to do a little uh, extra work in the background to make this work. And we'll just say he's neutral good. So right now he's got nothing here. He's got just a basic character sheet, he's level zero. So we could change all these, but when we put in our character's uh, class, it's not gonna change them all for us. So it's not really that big of a deal right now. So what we're gonna do first is we're actually just gonna come over the features. And this is where we're gonna actually add in our player character's class. So once that actually loads up, I didn't click on it the first time apparently. So we're good there. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna come down to classes. And then we're actually gonna take Barbarian and we're just gonna drag it over. So. There it is, Barbarian is in there. We have one level of Barbarian. If you wanna change the level of your Barbarian, you're gonna come in here to edit item. You're gonna come over to details and you can change it right here. Once you have a subclass, you can throw it in there. You can change your hit dice if you want to. You can change your spell progression, which you don't have as a Barbarian, which that's okay. But let's say you have a uh, Barbarian, uh, Wild Magic Barbarian or something like that. That's gonna have some interesting kind of plays on the spell casting and stuff. So we can actually add that in there. 
And then we can choose our class of skills, which is gonna have populated here. We'll just say athletics and perception for right now. We're gonna save that and we'll close that out. And that's what we have here. So we don't have any of the features that the barbarian gets at first level. So we're actually gonna come back over here in the class features and we're gonna have a bunch of different class features for every single class that we have. So let's find rage. And we're just gonna throw rage over and it's gonna populate that for us and it's gonna show you how many uses you have of it and what its usage is so if it's a bonus action action whatever the case may be and then we're also gonna add in our secondary ability of unarmored defense so we're gonna find that unarmored defense for barbarian we're gonna throw that in here and then boom now we have it so um you still have to kind of put it in there to in order to make the software do what it's supposed to do uh, right now it says that it's all zeros and stuff like that because we have tens across the board but if we change our attributes and we'll just use standard array for a human with plus ones across the board so this will be a 16 this will be a 15 14 15 14 13 12 so this will be 13 11 and this will be a nine if we're using the standard array going across. But as you can see, it didn't change our armor class. So we're gonna have to do that ourselves. So if we come back to our features, we can see here under unarmored defense, unarmored defense is gonna give us an armor class equal to 10 plus dex plus con mods. So we'll come back here, dex and cons are plus two. So this is gonna be a 14. So easy enough there. So if we ever wanna change our health, we can just do that simply up here. We'll just say at first level that uh, Jeffrey rolled for his stats and he's got, um, he's got 12 hit points, sure and he rolled for his health and he's got 12 hit points. So easy enough there, he's got one hit dice. You can actually take a short rest and actually tell you how many dice you wanna use. You can take a long rest and it'll recover limited use abilities per day. You can also change all your stuff down here. So if you have senses, you can add senses like dark vision or something like that. So we'll just say that, I know he doesn't have dark vision as a human, but we'll just say dark vision of 60 feet. There it is. You can add languages in here, so you can actually pick from all the other ones that are in normal uh, Dungeons and Dragons vanilla. So you can pick common. Let's say we're gonna also speak celestial and draconic. So save that in there, and it populates there in there. Damage immunities. If we had any damage immunities, we'd throw that in here, but we don't. Damage resistances. Uh, if we're raging, we have some, so we might have to play around with that a little bit. But there's a special case for that, so we might have to change some stuff in the background a little bit. But just keep that in mind as you're going through it. Vulnerabilities, condition immunities, weapon proficiencies. We can jump in here and just say simple martial weapon save and it's gonna populate that for us. Armor proficiencies, I'm just gonna leave that blank for right now, um, but we can throw them in there. We can have our tool proficiencies. We can say he plays a musical instrument, sure. Actually, let's just put in light armor and shields for funsies, uh, just, for, just to kind of give you a good example. And then you can make your own special traits or you can have special traits. So you have uh, power for build, savage attack, elven accuracy, halfling luck. So there's certain feats um, or racial traits that can be added into here to kind of make it work for your game. So especially with Elven Accuracy and stuff like that. But then you also have some of these feats of advantage on initiative, alert feed, jack of all trades, you got all that stuff. And then you got some global bonuses you can add in here yourself if you need to put something special in. So let's say you have a, I don't know, a special plus one weapon, or maybe you have some random ability or an item that'll give you this um, bonus on your melee attacks. Um, you can actually put it in there and it makes it easy. So you can kind of make the software do what you need it to do. Then if we come over to inventory, we can actually add some stuff in here from the compendium again. So we can go to items. Let's say we just give him a vial of acid. It's gonna populate an alchemist fire shirt. So you can see how it all kind of just works. You can drag and drop a lot of things similar to roll 20 in fantasy grounds. It all kind of works the same way. We just have to kind of do a little bit of extra work for the software to make some of those results come out. Come over to features, we already saw that. Spell book. So let's say that he had some spells. We'll actually take alarm. We'll throw it over there. Yeah, see, so populate. So easy enough there. And we can change his spellcasting ability to be whatever we want it to. Um, we'll just say it's strength for fun, because <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um, and then we can add some biography notes by just simply clicking on this little uh, pencil here. It's gonna populate something and say, hi, my name is Jeffrey. That's his biography. He doesn't have anything else. <laughs> um, so that's easy enough. And if we actually just hit this button, it'll save it. And then now you have a little biography section. So it's already populated in there for you. Now, if you're gonna actually go up a level, kind of like what we talked about, if we go over to features, we go to barbarian, you can actually edit it and you can come in here and just say two and then you close. It's gonna boost you up to level two. You can then alter your health and all that kind of stuff the way you need to. Um, but I'll just leave it at level one for now because that's really what it's the best example I can show for you. And that's basically all you really have to do to make your character. Now, if you wanna make a token or you wanna kind of create a picture here, you can actually click on here and you can upload a file. Um, we'll just pick a random one. We'll pick my buddy Flash that I have here. 
And you can see that once we go in here and select the file, it's gonna populate flash there. We can go into prototype token. We can say, we can choose the image. We can say flash token is what we want. So we're gonna choose this one and we'll select that file. And then we can actually change like where he um, jumps in, what his vision is. So if he has vision, what kind of vision he has, we can alter that kind of stuff. If he has certain resources we want to display. So if we want to display uh, his health bar at all times, we can actually come in here and go to attributes HP. It's going to display it. We can update the token. And then when we come back in here, we should be able to just drag him onto the field when we come over here to our things here and then boom, and you can see his health right there. So that's basically just kind of a general overview on how to kind of make your first player character here in Foundry Virtual Tabletop. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually going to end our tutorial on Foundry Virtual Tabletop and how to create characters and also how to interact with the interface there in the software. Now, I'm sure you guys have questions. Make sure you leave comments down in the comment section so I can answer them there or also come down to the live stream. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube and on Twitch. Link for the Twitch stream down in the description below. We'll talk about anything Foundry Virtual Tabletop, any other virtual tabletop softwares, Dungeons and Dragons, world building, being a DM, being a GM, whatever the case may be. We hang out and we answer all those questions down there. So make sure you come down to the live stream. If you made it to the end, also make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for the channel because there'll be more of these tutorials on Foundry coming out in the not too distant future, but there'll be also a lot of cool stuff on tabletop role playing. I hope you guys learned something of value today and until next time, Happy gaming.